Окей, okay, восторзе. Here we are in Park City. It's one of those places that I've wanted to tick off the list for, for a long time. I raced a Norba National back here in, in 2001. Didn't get to check it out properly, but I've always wanted to come back. Yeah, I've been a huge Ken Block fan for, for many years, even as far back as sort of Early 2000s, I, ro I rode for DC Shoes, but I never actually got to sort of meet and shake Ken's hand. I've followed what he's done ever since, from starting DC Shoes and into all the car stuff, the Jim Carner videos and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, before we even got to Utah, I was pretty excited to be able to go to Hoonigan HQ and, and check that out. You walk in that place and there's just so many toys hanging around and so many cool things to drive and play with that I definitely got man-shed envy. So here we are, Hoonigan HQ. I've been really looking forward to seeing this place and who better to show us around than Ken himself? Yes, thank you. Good morning, mate. Thanks for coming to my home away from home. Yeah, this is the, the place that's basically the, the home of Hoonigan Racing. We do stuff all over the world, but this is our, our home base. So a lot of the race cars, everything come back here to get serviced before they go out to all these various different places. So it's a little bit of overload for me. There's so many colors and so many cool things to look at. Yeah, you know, part of the what we do as a team is very creative so that you know the basic premise of the the shipping containers which is obviously a pretty dramatic thing that you see so these shipping containers are all built to be picked up and moved so if we you know need to build a new big office somewhere we can just pick all this up move it and resituate it or put it just the way it is even if you come over here in the kitchen you can see that we've used a, a tile that is actual used skateboards so this is a completely you know, recycled tile that oh, someone's yeah, gone around. The, see the thing? No way, I didn't even think it was that when we walked over here. Yeah. All right, so over here we have one of my favorite walls in the building, the Ain't Care wall. Ain't Care is just a saying that one of my guys, Ron, came up with, which was to strive to win at any cost with zero mechanical sympathy or regard for one's well-being. And that's a, that's a basic mentality, but I'm sure you know that feeling of, you know, something yeah. happens. When you break something in mountain biking, you've still got to think about, like, getting points or getting the best out of the run that you get. So you get a flat tire or a snap a chain or something like that, you've still got to get to the bottom as quick as possible. All right, so over here I have a few fun different projects and different things that we've done, such as like this sidecar bike the, over here with pedal assist. And this was actually we used at the races to move around tires and people and all that sort of thing. Oh, that's so handy. also have, you know, amazing set of, of the some Gymkhana tires and wheels that we've done for different events. I recognize some of those. Yeah. All right, now you've seen the offices. That's just one part, obviously, of this place. So. Let's go see where the real toys are kept. All right, and here we are. This is the toy shop. We got everything in here from our newest race car to an older race car to the very fun Can-Ams, my old Raptor Trex, and a uh, new boat. So lots of lots of toys in here. These are all the vehicles I've seen yeah. on your on your Instagram and yeah. stuff, but it's crazy seeing them in person. So this is kind of a unique moment uh, in time that you're actually here for, which is the fact that this race car that is normally only in Europe happens to be here. So my history, you know, coming from DC Shoes, I was a brand director there, and but one of the big things I was a part of was, you know, the art direction and and you know all the graphics. So it's really fun. I love like 80s graphics, especially like the Miami cigarette boat, boat graphics. Like, style. Yeah, like Miami <laughs> type stuff. I recognize this one. So this particular car, it was originally built to 
do stage rally, rally cross, and Gymkhana. So I, I have fond memories with this car. <laughs> I really like it. But this thing here, this is something we get to play in this week. Because of the very nice laws here in uh, Utah, this is a side-by-side -side that's been made street legal. And this one in particular that we have set up uh, to shuttle mountain bikes. And of course, on the back, we have the bike rack. So... Ah, the best bit. Yeah. Get the bikes up. Mm. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun, especially in the summer out here, you know, using this to get around town. I actually think the UK is just like Utah because you can make these street legal in the UK as well. Oh yeah? And For the farmers. <laughs> I mean, if Reliant Robins can be street legal, <laughs> I think this should be definitely street legal. You call those placky pigs in the UK. <laughs> so you want to take this out today? I'd love to, yeah. Good, all right, let's do this. Is this the oh shit handle? Yeah, cruising through town in a Can-Am with bikes on the back. People were definitely looking at us strangely when we were in the middle of town getting coffees. Pretty good at, at trusting other people in their, their, when they're that good at their sport, but there was a couple of moments in the Can-Am where we were drifting around corners, sliding towards big ditches that I definitely started to twitch a little bit. That was rowdy. I'm glad that was you and not me, I would have died. <laughs> I put the front in and then it was all off camera. So I've been downhilling about 15 years and for me it was a great transition from riding dirt bikes to being able to do something up here in the mountains and I've absolutely loved it. And once I started doing it, Ah, I started to become more aware of the industry and the riders and all that sort of stuff. Oh, damn, that was good. That was perfect. <laughs> Knowing who Steve Pete was and what he's gone through as a career has been pretty amazing. Ah, oh, damn, that was quick. <laughs> but it's nice to see for me just because, you know, I ride this trail all the time, but I don't know with my lack of experience, like how to push those things. So it's cool to actually see him do sort of more of the racing line and the compression and keeping that speed up because like I don't necessarily know the limits of the bike and you know, I gotta keep safe so I can make it to the next race. Yeah, Ken is obviously massively talented from what he does in a race car. I know he was quite good motocross rider back in the day and a good skateboarder, so those skills definitely transfer over into his downhill mountain biking. He's a good rider, loves riding his bike. Yeah, it was wicked that we got to go out on the boat with Ken um, to his local lake, do a bit of wake surfing. Yeah, Ken's wife was definitely better at wake surfing than him, and he was way better than me. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I've had a wicked week here in Park City. Um, Ken's been very welcoming and we've had a lot of fun. We've done a lot of things, been very busy every day, um, but it's been awesome to check this place out and ride here. Can't wait to get Ken back to Sheffield and show him some real scenery and, and mountains. <laughs> Santa Cruz Syndicate's been sponsored by Envy now for just over six years and uh, this week we're in Utah filming so we thought we'd come down and see the guys and check out how the wheels are made and what happens at Envy. Yeah, so this is our cut and ply room. Basically yep. the way everything starts here is everything comes, all the carbon comes on rolls and it's called pre-preg so that means that the resin, the glues are already impregnated into the carbon fiber comes on those big rolls. There's very little automation with carbon fiber. You can, I mean, there's certain things you can automate like cutting the strips, but it's really a manual process. Yeah. You know, each one of these steps is pretty much done by hand. So. Labor intensive. Labor intensive, exactly. Basically from here they get put into a bag. And in order to preserve the um, integrity of the resin, they then go into this freezer. So. If you come into the freezer here, they're all basically placed in bags and stored as a kit. So they'll take the fiber, or they'll take these kits out of here, and there's another door back there where they walk them into the layup room. So that's like one bag is one kit for a wheel? Yeah, yeah, or some section of a wheel, exactly. Ah, so. cool. So after everything goes into the freezer, it then is ready for layup, which happens inside this room right here. So. Looks pretty secretive. It's top secret. You want to go in there? I want to go in. Yeah, yeah let's go check it out. Yeah. No filming in here, though, boys. So this particular room is our bolt and cure room. So this is where, after the carbon's been put into the mold, they come in here to prep it to go into the ovens, and then they bake them, do all the cure process, and then clean them out. So. It's time to put you to work. You're gonna bolt up a mold. Line it up with the bolts and uh, go to town. Yeah, there you go. Don't think I'm too fast. Probably have to pick up the pace a little bit here, but you know, a little bit of time, a couple hundred more wheels, I think you'll be up for it. Full wheel. All Done right. Done. See, we'll see how, that, see how that bad boy comes out. <laughs> what we were, have been able to automate recently is some of the finishing. This is really great from a quality standpoint because it's the same every time. Emiliano here runs his uh, robot, and uh, the robot is a new addition, and it does an amazing job of finishing the rims. So after all the rims are finished, they get basically put onto the cart and we take them across the street for wheel build, decal, the final, final steps before, before shipping. Let's go check that out. Adios, robot. Mr. Sessions, Steve Pete here decided he wants to build his own wheel. Yeah, Steve. <laughs> There's a new Steve in town, let me ask. <laughs> let's, let's make Greg proud, let's build him a nice wheel. He's out a little bit. These will be perfect for Greg, yeah. Yeah, let's just give that thing a check. Just give him a few here. beers before he rides them. Yeah, she's perfect. All right, so this is the test lab. This is basically where all the fun happens, where we get a test and benchmark and break stuff, break stuff essentially. Yeah, we're gonna kind of show everybody the, the test that happens. We have uh, two different mandrels. So we have a mountain mandrel, which is a more aggressive profile to sort of mimic that just like a curb, intense curb hit. curb hit. Yeah, straight on rock strike. Just to put that in perspective, this is, this is the mandrel used for road wheels. So, uh, so more like a pothole. Yeah, much more like a pothole. <laughs> Plenty of them in Sheffield. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? So the very first DA trim that we made, pre-M series, you know, basically what we were striving to achieve was a 12-inch impact with that rim, and most of those would kind of fall more in the 
as far as starting to show signs of damage, we basically start to show signs of damage at this 10 inch drop height. Tanner. So that was, the, uh, that was the height that the old DH wheel broke at. Yeah, so each rim is different and it's based on the uh, discipline that it's designed for. So the M series, each rim is sort of designed for a very specific application. So the M90 is obviously the, or the downhill model in the M series line. It will basically do a 16 inch impact um, on this specific test. Put that in perspective, the, uh, you know, the M70 will basically do like a 14 um, and then so on. 18 inches, rim's gonna be fine. Oh. Maybe not. We just wanna kill the rim properly. It reads 24 inch, but I don't know if we can get it that high. This is where we all take carbon shrapnel to the face. What? Didn't even oh, that was a sudden rim death. <laughs> Tube's out. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I'm really impressed with how Envy have grown in that sort of six years that they sponsored the syndicate. They've, they've gone massive. Pretty cool to see the carbon process in real life. So here we are, coming up to the Lizard Skins. Um, I've had a signature grip with these guys for many years now, and uh, it's actually the first time I get to come and visit them here in American Fort, Utah. Steve, welcome to Lizard Skins. Thanks, mate. This is our headquarters. One of the things that we like to show off here because it's a new part of our history, obviously we've been doing cycling accessories for 24 years now, but four years ago we got into the baseball industry. We have uh, 12 endorsed athletes within Major League Baseball. These are all these guys, they're with the signatures. Let's try one. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> But let's, let's go over and I'll show you a little bit about uh, the machine that we use to, to do engravings and, and our lock-on grips. This is Dirk, our main man on, in our production Dirk. department. Hey. That, hey, how are you? Good, mate, good. That manages everything back here with, with the custom lock-ons. Made something for you. No way, the cow Dude, print. I've been drooling over that cow build and wish we were a part of it. How'd you do that? combination of some rotary work and some flat work and some wizardry. <laughs> wizardry, some yeah. Dirk, Dirk yeah. wizardry. So what we're doing here is we got Ken Block's Kill All Tires logo. We're gonna pull it apart and burn it on some rings. Man, let's print them on the laser. Yeah, let's do it. You mean you use a machine, you don't use laser eyes? You focus really hard. Keep focusing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're all done. Yeah, those look trick. I like the gray green. Nice. Cheers, Box, eh? Thanks to Monster for getting us all together and uh, bringing us out here to sample the goodness. <laughs>